And Matt, still today, um, you are the only male Olympic, Australian Olympic male athlete to be out while competing at the Olympics. Yeah. Um, field study, um, one of the findings was that we need to find more out elite sports people. Um, should sports people feel obliged to come out as a matter of social responsibility to the rest of the LGBTIQ community? Um, uh, ideally, yes, but um, as we all know, everybody's um, situation is different, everybody's family of origin is different, everybody's um, uh, environment that they grow their, their social environment that they grow up is in is different. Um, you know, city kids are blessed to um, maybe have stereotypically um, a more accepting environment. Um, you know, especially those who in in a Sydney who have the Mardi Gras to look forward to every year and and have role models um, like on TV and stuff. You know, that it's kind of normalised on TV there. Whereas you know, country kids. Um, while I think hopefully it is, you know, it is starting to catch up, um, they're always going to have typically a tougher time. So, um, in an ideal world, yes, um, all LGBTIQ XYZ athletes um, <laughs> should be like, you know, once they come to terms with that and they feel comfortable enough with that, yeah, they they should be comfortable enough to be themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah. So ideally, I think it was interesting in the film that the activists had a different perspective than the athletes. You know, the activists sort of said, they've got to do it, they've got to do it, but I think your, your position is kind of reality. Exactly, and it's like, it's again, it's 2020 hindsight. Yeah. You know, they can, they can say that now that they're not in that environment anymore. Yeah. And it's so hard when you are actually in that environment because it's the fear of the unknown. Whereas once you're out of it, it's like... You, you know, you're not, you don't have that kind of pressure anymore. Also, you don't have, you know, potential endorsements riding on your set, your, your, your image anymore. Whereas when you're in, when you are the athlete, you do. And if you don't have any um, examples, you don't have any data to, to contradict that, that, you know, that it might affect your endorsements and stuff, then you're going to be really hesitant to do that. Yeah. And so when more um, LGBTI athletes come out and they do start getting those big endorsement deals, they do start getting their face on the Kellogg's boxes and stuff like that, that's when, you know, younger kids are going to go, oh, sexuality is not going to be a barrier to me being successful. Yeah. And Matt, um, Michael Sam said to have, seemed to have done quite well financially for coming out. In fact, they said he received a gold mine in endorsements. Was this your experience? <laughs> I was like seething with rage. <laughs> I was like, what? When? How? What? Like, how could so much have changed in just like five years? <laughs> but also, it's a very, very different economy. And um, and yeah, I've been asked the question. You know, did um, coming out is that what um, kept you so poor, <laughs> essentially? Um, and I just can't answer that question because I don't have an example of being famous and well known and being straight because I I came out before I got before the Olympics before I was well known so um, and you know yeah I have no I have no um, evidence to to anything other than just being gay and um, and I can uh, at the at the same time as the Beijing Olympics happened. The global financial crisis happened, so you know, like it's. I don't want to. Yes, it's convenient, inconvenient. Um, it's a, it's an inconvenient truth that you know that that's what happened. But um, so I can never say that it was my sexuality. Um, but then again, having said that, I'm. You can like endorse me now if you want. Anyway. <laughs> I'm free. I'm free now. Wave the rivers of gold. Yeah. Let them float. Looking back at your time in the community sport we started. What would be the one thing that you would have liked to have seen in the community sport that might have helped you on your journey? Is there any sort of particular? Is, is that directly one in particular? Or no. is there, would anyone like to grab hold of that? I think the biggest thing is 
the use of the language by coaches and staff or administrators or even parents when they throw out the word, oh that's so gay or stop being a faggot or whatever it is, uh, I, I'd like to assume that in most cases it's not done in a negative or um, condescending context, but the reality is that hurts. So, and I just think that if, if we can start using language that is, is appropriate, um, then that can go a long way. And I, I know that I wouldn't have felt that some of the stuff that was hurtled towards me, whilst it wasn't in a, a negative way, I don't think, but it did, it did hurt. So I think that's just one, one small step. Yeah, so try and really have homophobia. You're not sure if it's directed. And coaches, coaches play a very significant role to the modelling and also influencing. So try to get the message out there. Anyone else who would like to ask a question? Same road? Yeah, actually, I think it. Uh, it is up to the coach to set the tone for the training environment and so it is pivotal for the coach to um, set that tone of inclusion and that's what my coach did for me when I moved from Brisbane where I was in the closet in my training environment um, which uh, made me isolated in my training environment because I started diving at such a young age, much too young to have you know, really established my sexual identity. I then couldn't, I felt stuck because I couldn't then admit to everybody that I've been deceiving them, even by omission. Um, so I just had to leave that training environment altogether. In fact, quit the sport, move cities, and it was that was when I became comfortable with my sexuality. And this new coach, um, he made a very big point of making sure that I felt comfortable and accepted for who I was, and making sure that it was the same with everybody in that training environment. And that had the most profound effect, not only on my self-esteem, but on my progress in the sport because I was diving for the first time in a long time because I wanted to, not because I felt like it was my only ticket to being special. Right. And so did the diving, uh, diving Australia, were they actively supportive or was it you just lucky to get a good coach, do you think? Was it, was I was just lucky to get a, a coach who cared for my welfare as a human being more than my welfare as an athlete, which I also hadn't had before. Um, and now that I, I mean, obviously, a, a, an association can't be aware of a problem if, if you know, if you don't talk about a problem or if you know, um, if nothing's being done about it. Uh, but after I did come out and it sort of, I was quite open about it. Um, that's kind of when it came to the attention of the of the association, and I got that support from there. Um, and uh, and I think, and they'd be very very open to putting in place any. Um, kinds of programs like an out to win um, kind of program, they would be so happy to implement that kind of education into diving. Um, and I am pretty sure it would be the same with basketball because I met the CEO of uh, Basketball Australia recently and um, and he's totally down with all of that. That's and great. Yeah, was um, Pride of Sport is better than just that as a plug for Pride of Sport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my um, philosophy around uh, being a role model is as soon as anybody looks up to you, you automatically become a role model whether you like whether you like it or not. And so you can choose to accept that and embrace that and be a good role model, or you can choose to not let that change your behaviour and just behave how you want and potentially be a bad role model. And I think that there are not enough good role models in the world, and so that's kind of what motivates me to be a better person, not to be perfect because that's unrealistic. Um, I've made some mistakes, but <laughs> recovering drug addict, you know, like, um, but it was, but it's learning from those mistakes and being honest about them and then uh, modifying your behaviour and, and just living your life as authentically and, um, and yeah, just trying to be the best, generally the best person you can be and, and that's what I've tried to do and, and I'm really, really proud of being um, part of this community and, um, you know, I've, I've never made it my my one identifying characteristic, but as soon as anybody, you know, makes that association, I put my hand up and say, yes, I'm fucking, I'm queer as, and I, you know, and that's, um, I'm so proud of that, and I'm so proud of my community, and the support that they give me, and the, the unconditional love that they give me, and, um, and I want that for the whole world. Great, so look, just to wrap up, it sounds like that.